debating Joe Biden. That's the focus of tonight's angle. All right, I've been thinking a lot about next week's CNN presidential debate and what both sides will attempt to do to convince those voters they deserve another term. Well, first, as we've previously noted, the fact that this is happening so early, it's just further confirmation that the Biden camp knows he's in a hole and that he needs to turn the tide, as I just said to Kevin O'Leary. The stakes for him couldn't be higher. This, this, this is the entire election as far as I'm concerned. If Biden goes out there and messes up, it's game over. If, 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 he, if he walks out there and a week later he's lower in the polls, it's panic in the party. Second, the fact that Trump agreed so quickly to the timing and the format tells us he's confident about winning. They said, we're going to do a debate. We'd like to challenge you to a debate. But they didn't want me to accept. They didn't think I was going to do it. They thought I would say, no, I don't want to do it because CNN is so, you know, it's fake news. I think fake Tapper would really help himself if it were honest. But you'll see immediately if it is or not. I'll be debating three people instead of one, instead of one half of a person. All right. If you think former President Trump's off base there, if you think Jake Tapper or Dana Bash are generally pretty fair minded people, then perhaps you've been sleeping for the past several years. President Trump lives in an atmosphere of disinformation, false information. Insults, invective and outright lies. That's what we heard from Donald Trump in Iowa this weekend. Now, Bash and Tapper are so far in the D.C. bubble that they're obviously just frustrated when Trump leads Biden on key issues. U.S. and world affairs, economy, immigration, Israel, Gaza. Trump has an advantage. Uh, and it's actually, if you look at the Israel-Gaza question, the fact that Trump has a 20-point advantage in Michigan, I mean, the world is upside down. <laughs> the world is upside down. No, people actually have eyes and ears. Well, well, but it's because for them, the world only makes sense. Um, democracy only works when Joe Biden is reelected and voters see Trump as Hitler. The dehumanizing rhetoric of Adolf Hitler is once again alive and well on a national political stage, this time given life by former president and current Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump. Now, given who the moderators are, it's even more important that Trump handles these 90 minutes well. So don't complain about how biased they are. We all know that they're there to help Biden and hurt you. Sometimes a wry smile is better than showing the world uh, that news anchors can actually get under your skin. So my simple advice, debate, but don't take the bait. Because the Democrats have been stupid enough to tell everyone what their campaign strategy is. One of the key goals for Biden heading into next week's showdown is trying to paint his opponent, Donald Trump, as a divisive and chaotic figure who is unfit to serve in the office of the presidency. Keep your cool, no matter what. Don't give them what they want. And if Trump maintains his composure and doesn't step into their traps, he's going to win handily. Remember his reaction after winning Iowa? We're going to rebuild our cities and we'll work with the Democrats to do it. I'd be glad to work with the people in New York. We're going to work with the people in Chicago and L.A. We're going to rebuild our cities. I was standing there and I was like, yes, good on him for doing that. And when pressed on whether he'll support a never Trump Republican Larry Hogan in his Senate bid. I'm about the party and I'm about the country and I, I would like to see him win. So you're endorsing him? Well, nobody's asked me that, but essentially I would be endorsing him, yeah. And he's also letting bygones be bygones with Nikki Haley as well. And last weekend in Detroit, well, a picture is worth a thousand words. African-American voters, more of them, see a Republican actively courting their votes for a change on the big issues. They're not doing it by just cheap pandering. So the caricature that Democrats are trying to paint Donald Trump with begins to melt away. Substance, results, a real record of putting money in people's pockets with a strong economy, of course, it pays off big time for Trump. And remember, Trump's really funny. I just got this today. Somebody handed it to me. It's a weird, and not as a joke. I said, anybody have any Tic Tacs? And the guy said, yeah, I have one. Look at the size of that sucker. Could you? <laughs> this is called Biden Tic Tacs. 
This costs more money than the one that was like 10 times bigger. This is inflation. Now, even with a no live audience situation, I just take a few opportunities to make the TV audience, which is going to be very big, laugh. We all need to laugh. And by the same token, though, if at the end of the debate, a lot of time was spent on the 2020 election, January 6th, or Judge Mershon, Alvin Bragg, Fonnie Willis, uh, with Trump at all sounding defensive or angry, I think Democrats, at least, will consider that a significant win for them. Remember, they know Biden's weak. And, and this is not to say the weaponization of government is not a huge issue. It is a big issue. But it's not what's driving voters to the polls. So I'd just quickly dispense with that. I, I could see Tapper maybe asking Trump something like, sir, as a convicted felon, uh, there's a possibility that you may be sentenced to prison and face multiple other cases down the road. How does that make you fit for the presidency, sir? Well, know that this type of question is going to be asked and do one thing. Well, don't get Trump to, you know, try to get Trump to lose his cool. That's why that question is being asked. Again, Trump doesn't need to take the bait. Now, on their convicted felon point, I'd simply say, well, Jake, most people see these cases as driven by politics. And they know that I decided not to run for office again. None of them would have been brought. But setting that aside, we believe we have a strong appeal in the New York case, and we expect to win that appeal. And most Americans, Jake, have no time to follow the minute details of these cases. They're too busy trying to figure out how to pay their grocery bills and their mortgage because of Joe Biden. Their wages, Jake, aren't keeping up with inflation, uh, Joe Biden's inflation. Biden's open borders fanatics believe keeping wages low with millions of new immigrants flooding into our cities and towns. They believe that's the answer. But under my administration, wages and family income were up. And when I left office, inflation, Jake, was at 1.4 percent. It's always pivot to what matters most uh, for the regular people watching. It's about them and what they're most worried about. Bread and butter issues, inflation, the economy, the border. And Trump beats Biden on all three issues. He should stick to those. Now, Biden doesn't know the names of the victims of his border invasion. That's another huge issue. Trump should, and he already does. So when the debate wraps, the moderators and Biden's people, they want their viral moments. They want to see Trump maybe lashing out or losing his cool. But if Trump sticks to comparing his record to Biden's and also forecasts what Biden is going to do if he gets another four years, including get us into a war with Russia, Joe will be the one who's sputtering by the end and lashing out. And the moderators, what will they do then? They'll be left with little more than, tonight, Joe Biden outperformed expectations, and Trump was, although more measured, he was, well, still Trump. So after the debate, it's pretty much status quo. And that's the angle. 